Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age 2. In the last episode, Leandra died. Amelia is reeling from this information still, but the Viscount has asked to speak to her. She's gonna go, she's gonna do it, but how much of the information she actually takes in, that's kind of debatable, I think. We're, we're gonna grab Aveline. Let's be brutally honest, Aveline is the one who's probably gonna be listening to everything. Amelia, she's kind of just there as the face. You know, she's the one being like, yeah, I'll take the quest. Yeah, I'm listening. Okay, fine. But none of it is going in. Aveline is there to retain information. Hmm. Who next? I think Varric and Sebastian. There we go. I like that. You know what? Aveline did want to speak with us, so we're gonna do that first, I good think. A good day to you too, but I, I don't think Amelia necessarily thinks it's a good day. Different here as captain. Feels like family. Hawk. I don't care what else is going on. We haven't spoken about Leandra. How are you? This, this isn't Aveline's fault. This isn't, you know, who, who could have caught the guy? Who could have, if the Templars couldn't do it? You know, I will say, Amelia, again, she's, just like with the Bartran situation, she's not blaming Varric. She's blaming herself for not checking Bartrand out and for putting her little brother in a situation that was dangerous. In this case, she's blaming Quentin slash magic and herself, yet again, because she she was the one who was supposed to be protecting Leandra. She promised her father. She promised Carver. And she failed them both. I, th I think Amelia... As, as I said, she doesn't like showing that she's sad. Because she did that quite often when she was little... And Malcolm and Leandra's response was, don't, don't show us that you're scared. You're bumming everyone out. You're making the, your siblings upset. Can you try and crack a smile? Please, just try and tell a joke. So I don't think, I don't think Amelia can be honest with Aveline about this. She's, you know, like, oh, I'm fine. Really, I am, with a smile that, doesn't really reach her eyes. I have a smile on my face. That should be enough for most people. That doesn't work on me. I knew her too. I want to think my mother was like her. I just have flashes of impossibly long hair. But my father... Would you like to hear one thing? Uh, thank you, but no. Just one, I doubt it. No! No, if Aveline wants to tell us about her dad, of course. You've never talked about him. My father trained me in all the skills he had been forced to give up. He spent everything to get me into Kaelin's service. Do you know what I remember? When he read to me, stupid things, dragons and heroes. He wouldn't turn a page until I reached over and took his hand. That big man made every step of the story my choice. I loved that. He died of the wasting in a Denerim ward. Those last weeks, I read to him. I had to take his hand to turn the pages, and I couldn't tell if he was too weak, or if it was the old game. He smiled at that, at his big girl. <sighs> I don't know why I'm telling you this. Drink. Oh god, I'm getting emotional again. Game, no! I don't like crying and playing games at the same time. For them. For uh, your father and my mother. A glass for those we've lost. <sighs> All right then. 
Benoit Dulac and Leandra Hawke. Don't let anyone tell you when to move on. Take their hand and say, my choice. That's all I have. I'll miss her too. you so much oh I love that advice don't don't let anyone tell you when to move on it's your choice here's the thing Amelia is the type to wallow she's the type if she's not doing anything if there is no one there saying hey I need your help hey you've got to do this hey go out the house it, it's like what happened with Carver. She just spent a year indoors languishing because she tends to wallow. She needs someone to kind of pull her out of her funk. And so for right now, she has a purpose. You know, the Viscount has asked to speak with her. Like, she's she's pretty busy. But as soon as this is over... And I think it really hits her. It hits her how empty and hollow her chest is. That's when things are gonna get bad for Amelia. Right now she can't process anything, but when she can, oh. It, um, it's not gonna be pretty. That's what I'm gonna say. Uh, now then, uh, Viscount, you're through here. Hello? It is apparently not enough that the Cunari define my political life. They must also infect what I hold personal. It is my son, Seamus. The life you saved, he would now squander by converting to the Kun. He has left for the Cunari compound. Please, Sarah Hawk, convince Seamus to come home. At, at one point, Amelia would have, she would have been like, Oh God, Seamus! Seamus, you, you had so much going for you. Oh, I really hoped that you would find peace in the light of the Maker and all of that. She would be devastated to hear this news. But right now, again, she, she just doesn't feel anything. The Arashok says nothing good about Kirkwall, yet he accepts conversions. I cannot understand him. Maker knows I've tried, but he landed with, what, a few hundred men? Add up the deaths and defections, and the Arishok must need to bolster his ranks. I'm sure my son is quite the symbolic prize. Did anyone else see him leaving for the compound? He made no secret of it. I'm sure he intended it as another of his statements about closer relations. Your example inspired him. I might agree, but now is not the time. These matters are... delicate. He's politically dangerous, you mean? The office must remain strong, Sir Arhawk. He is of age. The decision seems rightly his. I want to let him find his way, but in my position... he's taken a great deal of inspiration from you. I want to allow his idealism, but not blindly. At best, my opponents will claim that my office is now in Canari hands. At worst, I lose my son. How on earth has Seamus taken any inspiration from Amelia? She's horrifically anti Kunari. Also, I will say, um, this line, you know, like, he is of age, the decision seems rightly his. The lights are on. But there's no one home, if you get what I'm saying. Amelia is speaking, but it's it's not necessarily Amelia. She's kind of on autopilot. She's just kind of saying stuff. That's that's why she was like, the decision's his. If he wants to join the queue, and fuck it. Yeah, make a joke. That's that's what she'd do under normal circumstances. He's your child. How fast can he be? Who knows? He might actually listen to you. No one else has dealt as closely with the Kunari. I hope he will see that we can be accepting and still be a proud citizen of Kirkwall. I wish we could all see that. 
Oh, buddy. Okay, well, we'll go track him down, see where he's up to. But let's, let's be brutally honest. Amelia's mind isn't... She's not focused. I imagine it... It's probably Aveline who's doing most of the directing. You know, like, come along, Hawk. This this way is the docks. You know, that type of thing. Ooh, ambushed. Mercenaries have blocked the street. What kind of street is this? What kind of street has a sea link? Okay, hello? You are right. Let's haste it up. And summon the puppy. Go, go, go. Bugger off. There we are. You're down. Oh, oh, look at that. Hello. You'll surprise me back there. Yeah, everyone's doing all right for health. But hello, buddy. Now bugger off. You can't stand up, not yet. There we go. Hmm. Well, that is concerning. And Aveline is still screaming. Cowl of the Overseer. Ooh. So I, I did sell off... Thank you. Um, yeah, what I was saying is that is done. I I did sell off all of the promotional stuff that I had remaining. It was better in quality than what Amelia has now, but I, I like this outfit. It's very Amelia. Thank you. Okay, so it, it's just a, you know, you can leave the area whenever you want. Got it, got it. So was that anti Canari, anti Viscount, or Seamus himself not wanting to be rescued? Seamus isn't the type. Let's go. Hmm. It is deeply concerning. Okay, I either way leads us out. Yep, yep. And the game is just like, right, you're going here. All are forbidden, except you, for now. How lovely. So, hope the Arashok wasn't planning on keeping the Viscount's son. Uh, again, under normal circumstances, I think Amelia, she'd, she'd be storming in, powering through, like, right, I'm gonna get him back. Then we need to put him into all of the Chantry-based therapy we can, because clearly this boy has lost his goddamn mind. But nah, she's she's just slowly walking, making her way. If Seamus doesn't want to come back, I... Sarah Hawk. I'm here about the Viscount's son. Are you? In four years, I have made no threat, and fanatics have lined up to hate us simply because we exist. But despite lies and fear, Ba's still beg me to let them come to the Kuhn. They hunger for purpose. The son has made a choice. You will not deny him that. Hmm. Again, she's on autopilot. Make a joke. Converting the Viscount's son. His opposition will have a field day. Um? The enemy of your enemy should be your friend? I don't fear the whole of them together. And it is not my role to reject the free choice of Vidathari. The son responded to his own demand of the Kuhn. He is neither my slave nor my prisoner. He is not even here. He went to his father. Ask the Viscount why he would send you and the letter both. That probably could have been mentioned earlier. They are meeting at the Chantry. A last pointless appeal, I assume. The Viscount has not tried to involve the Chantry before. No, but we know who would. Mother Patrice. 
a suspect in many things. If she has threatened someone under my command again, there is only one response. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. I just can't think of it right now. Her intent is obvious, and what the Kuhn demands is clear. This is the last insult I intend to suffer. Resolve this, or her hiding place will be reduced to rubble. I will be watching, Hawk. And Amelia doesn't care if you're watching, mate. Oh, all right, let's let's go to the chantry. We we don't want the arrow shot to reduce the uh the chantry to a pile of rubble now, do we? Not directing that at anyone in particular. Hawk, look at what you have done. To pounce upon the Viscount's son, a repentant convert in the Chantry itself. A crime with no excuse. Your Kunari masters will finally answer. Again, at this stage, Amelia has seen too many corpses of decent people. In, in the past few days, I, she just feels numb. She just feels completely numb. This, this is also something she'll have to unpack later. Coming upon Seamus's posed body in the Chantry. Like, once the Leandra thing hits her, then the Seamus thing will probably be in, like, quick succession. Your mother died. Also, you found another body. <laughs> oh, dear. All this will do is make people hate you. I have kept the fear of the Kunari fresh in every sermon, every prayer. They will know whose word to believe. When people learn of this attack, they will rise. Not zealots or the unknowing, but the true majority. Great plan. Until people start dying in a war with the Kunari. To die untested would be the real crime. People need the opportunity to defend faith. Starting with you. Earn your reward in this life and next. These heretics must die. Uh, a couple of points. One, literally most of what she just said, Amelia's like, yes. Yes, I agree with this. Secondly, I would like it noted, some of the lines Amelia has said, I do think that that is Varric putting words into Amelia's mouth. The line about Mother Patrice at the, um, at the Kunari compound when she was like, no, the Viscount wouldn't, but we know someone who would, Mother Patrice. I imagine Aveline actually said that, but, you know, Varric was like, Hawk's the protagonist and all of this. They should say something. And in this case, the line is like, until people start dying in a war with the Kunari, uh, Amelia probably wouldn't have said that. Now, very quickly, you are going to want to pick up this. Also, if you have any interest in looting, you need to do that whilst the battle is going, because uh, what happens is once you fight this fight, there are a couple of continuous cutscenes that place you outside the Chantry, and it is impossible to come back and get this. So... Very quickly. Uh, did, did you pick that up? There we go. Uh, pardon me, guys. I'm just reading a codex entry. You can, you can fight amongst yourselves. The History of the Chantry, Chapter 3. It is said that at the Battle of Valerian Fields, Mafarath stood and looked over his armies. He had conquered the southern reaches of the greatest empire the world had ever known and built splintered barbarian clans into a force to be feared. With pride in his heart, he turned to congratulate his men and found that they had turned from him. Mafarath fell to the evil of jealousy. After all that he had done, 
his wife was the ro- was the one to receive all the glory. He saw his wife's power and influence, and tired of his place as second husband below the maker. His heart swelled with fury. If he had conquered just to have his wife wrested from him by a forgotten god and a legion of faith-hungry rabble, then perhaps this war was not worth the trouble. Here, history and the chant of light come apart. History tells us that Mathrath looked north into the central imperium and saw nothing but more war against a rapidly regrouping army and he despaired. The Chant of Light holds that Mafarath chafed with jealousy of the Maker, and jealousy of the glory that Andraste received, although it was he who led the armies. Mafarath travelled to the imperial capital of Minrathus to speak with the Archon Hesarion. There he offered up his wife to the Imperium in return for a truce that would end hostilities once and for all. The Archon, eager to put down the voice of the prophet that stirred his own people against him, agreed. Mafarath led Andraste into an ambush, where she was captured by Imperial agents, putting an end to her exalted march. Crowds of loyalists stood in the central square of Minrathus to watch Andraste's execution. By command of the Archon, she was burned at the stake in what the Imperium believed to be the most painful punishment imaginable. According to the Chantry, however, Andraste was instead purified and made whole by the flames, ascending to life at her maker's side. By all accounts, there was only silence where they expected screams. At the sight of the prophet burning, the crowds were filled with a profound guilt, as if they had participated in a great blasphemy. So moving was the moment that the Archon himself drew his sword and thrust it into the prophet's heart, ending her torment and leaving those assembled to consider the weight of what they had seen. Whereas the execution of Andraste was meant to be a symbol of defeat for the faith of the Maker, in truth, it all but sealed the fate of the worship of the old gods and paved the way for the spread of the Maker's chant. From Tales of the Destruction of Thedas by Brother Genitivi, Chantry Scholar. There we go. Okay, now then. God, this... This is something else that Amelia is going to have immense guilt over. You know, killing a bunch of people in the Chantry, especially faithful people. Oh. Oh, dear. Come on, take him out. There we go. Did anyone else? Anyone else drop anything? I am going to be looting as I go, because why not? Oh, you did. Thank you. Come on, take her out. There we go. Do you see, Your Grace? Traitors attacking the very core of the Chantry. They defile with every step. There is death in every corner, young mother. It is as you predicted, all too well. Hmm. Again, she's she's just on autopilot. She's on to you, Patrice. Quick, lie harder. Don't you spout your Kunari filth. This is a hand of the divine. I have ears, Mother Patrice. The Maker would have me use them. Viscount Dumas' son is dead. Killed here in your name. I'm sure my name won't like that. Patrice? Seamus Dumas was a Canari convert. He came here to repent and was murdered. Love or hate the Canari. A blind nun could see she took this too far. No price is too much when we speak of eternity. Eternity is long enough that we need not rush to meet it. They deny the Maker. And you diminish him, even as you claim his side. Andraste did not volunteer for the flame. Sirrah Hawk, you stand with the captain of the guard? The young mother has erred in her judgment. A court will decide her fate. The Chantry respects the law, and so must she. Grand Cleric? Grand Cleric?
protect those of the Kune. We do not abandon our own. Please. Send for Viscount Dumas. My son. Murdered in the heart of the Chantry by those who held a sacred trust. What hope for this city when we fail our own so completely? Mm. Oh, I'm... Amelia is on autopilot, but literally... His son has just died. His son's just died. Her mom's just died. We've just had to kill a bunch of the faithful in a Chantry. Then we witnessed a Chantry mother get murdered by a Kunari in said Chantry. This is... There is no bright side. Everything is doomed. It just seems like a dickheadish thing to say. You're like, oh, you're holding your dead son in your arms. Look on the bright side. I. This. It's too dickheadish. It's too. We'll go with this. The Arashok is still here, Excellency. You must be ready to stand up to him. I cannot. I have already failed where it mattered most. Please. Hawk. Leave me. We we should not have money for that. No. I I like how that went. I think that was suitably autopilot. You know, like the Arashok is still here. The city needs you to be ready for him. I I like that. I like that. And oh, with that act this two. To ease tensions. Hmm? The Viscount's son and Canari aggression, even if justified, it won't end. Hawk, I thought this could wait, but I need to speak to you at your home very soon. Okay, uh, what I was saying is that Act 2 is rapidly coming to an end. Oh, we, we only have like three quests left. As I said, Act 2, once, it's, once the ending starts, it's like bam, 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 you're done. Act 3. Oh, you know what? I, uh, I have things that I need to plan. You know, I, I want to check that I've gotten all of the upgrades for this act and all of that so you know what I'm, I'm gonna end off right here in the next episode we head back to our estate and see what Aveline wants to say but until then please remember to like if you enjoyed leave a comment below and if you wanted to subscribe it would be very much appreciated I've been Callista thanks for watching and see you in the next episode